In this video, we're going to be talking about the vestibulo-ocular motor reflex, or the VOR as it's often called. The VOR is a reflex that allows gaze fixation on an object while the head turns, and it involves four cranial nerves. The sensory component of the VOR is cranial nerve 8, or the vestibulocochlear nerve, more specifically the vestibular part of this nerve. And the motor component of the VOR is cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, which are the oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve, and abducent nerves, respectively. The most common way to learn the VOR is by learning the horizontal VOR. I specify horizontal because there's also a vertical VOR that we'll see in a few minutes. Now with the horizontal VOR, head turns to the left result in eyeball movements to the right in order to maintain fixation on a particular object or point. Okay. So to understand that, before we go to this diagram, let's take a look at a video of the horizontal VOR. So right there, you notice my head rotates right. And my gaze is fixated on some object on the computer screen from where I'm recording. And in order to maintain that gaze fixation, my eyeballs had to rotate left. So when I rotate my head right, the eyeballs rotate left. Vice versa, when my head rotates left, as you see here in the description, my eyeballs are going to have to rotate right in order to maintain that gaze fixation. So this is the horizontal VOR, and it goes in both directions. And the eyeball movement is always going to be in the contralateral direction to the head rotation. And again, this allows gaze fixation on an object while the head turns. So when we look at the horizontal VOR, this is involving the lateral, also called horizontal, semicircular canals. And when we undergo cervical or neck rotation, this is always going to stimulate the ipsilateral, lateral or horizontal semicircular canal. In other words, if we look at this diagram, up here's the left eye, this is the right eye, so that means this is the left vestibular apparatus and this is the right vestibular apparatus. In this diagram, pink is excitation and green is inhibition. So if I rotate my neck to the left, which of these lateral semicircular canals is excited or activated? It's the left lateral semicircular canal. So whatever direction the neck rotates, you're always going to have activation of the ipsilateral lateral semicircular canal and inhibition on the other side. So in this case, because I'm rotating my neck to the left, the left lateral canal is going to activate or excite and the right lateral canal is going to be inhibited. Now these nerve fibers that are coming out of the vestibular apparatus on either side, these are the vestibular nerves. Remember that's one component of cranial nerve 8. That's the sensory component of the VOR. That information regarding equilibrium and the head turn, either left or right, is relayed to the vestibular nucleus on the same side. From here, this information is relayed to a variety of nuclei, each of which is associated with one of these three cranial nerves right here, the motor components of the VOR. Right here you see the abducent nuclei, each of which is associated with cranial nerve 6, and these are located in the pons. Up here you see the oculomotor nuclei, which are obviously associated with the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3, and these are located in the midbrain. There's also trochlear nuclei that are associated with cranial nerve 4, but for simplicity these are not shown in the diagram. So let's consider for a moment this left neck rotation right here. The eyeballs are going to have to rotate in the opposite direction. They're going to both have to rotate right. Did the right eyeball rotate away from or toward the midline? So here's the midline right there. Well, the right eyeball moved away from the midline, did what we call ocular abduction. So ocular abduction is facilitated by this muscle, which is the right lateral rectus muscle. That muscle has to activate. In contrast, the right medial rectus muscle has to be inhibited. And that's what you can see right here. The green is inhibition, the red is excitation or activation. And that's going to produce right eye abduction. Now for the left eyeball, this one actually is moving toward the midline when the eyes are rotating right. So you have the opposite case here. In order to rotate the left eye toward midline, 
the medial rectus muscle has to activate, and the left lateral rectus muscle has to be inhibited, which again you see reflected in these colors. Okay? If we instead had right neck rotation, the eyeballs would have to rotate to the left, and you would actually have right lateral canal activation or excitation, and left lateral canal inhibition, and then these muscle pattern activations and inhibitions would be reversed. So everything would be the opposite. So again, here's the horizontal VOR. When the head rotates one direction, the eyeballs rotate the opposite direction in order to maintain that gaze fixation. Now you can also have very fast head turns, and if the head rotates very quickly, the eyeballs are also going to have to rotate very quickly in the opposite direction, and that's what you see right here. And a person with a healthy intact VOR shouldn't have any problem with this movement. What you might see if they do have a problem is the eyeballs might lag behind. It might produce some nystagmus, which we talk about in a separate video, and they may also get symptoms of dizziness, nausea, and if it's bad enough, they may have the urge to vomit. The vertical VOR is very similar. We're going to have head turns upward that result in eyeball movement downward in order to maintain gaze fixation. Conversely, you could also have head turns downward that result in eyeball movement upward in order to maintain gaze fixation. Now, the horizontal VOR utilizes the lateral or horizontal semicircular canals, whereas the vertical VOR is going to utilize mainly the anterior, also called superior semicircular canals. In this case, cervical flexion is going to stimulate both of the anterior semicircular canals at the same time, whereas cervical extension is going to inhibit both of the anterior semicircular canals at the same time. So here is the vertical VOR. So you'll notice here that when my neck bends forward into cervical flexion, my eyeballs have to move upward in order to maintain gaze fixation. And then when my head rotates upward into cervical extension, my eyeballs have to rotate downward to maintain gaze fixation. And you could imagine here that instead of the lateral and medial rectus muscles, it's going to instead be the superior and inferior rectus muscles. So there, when my head rotates up and my eyeballs rotate down, it's actually going to be bilateral activation of the inferior rectus muscles, right? When my head rotates down, the eyeballs rotate up, and so it's going to be bilateral activation of the superior rectus muscles. And again, you can also do the head movements fast like this, and the eyeballs should be able to keep up in a healthy individual with an intact VOR. It's also worth noting that in patients with peripheral vestibular deficits, which are also called hypofunctions, the patient will probably have symptoms like nausea, dizziness, nystagmus even, uh, with the head thrust test and other special tests. So the head thrust test, this is a good special test used in the ocular motor screen that looks at the VOR. And if the patient has an issue with the VOR itself or gaze stabilization or anything associated with this system right here, that test is going to be positive. And we would expect that test to be positive in any individual with a hypofunction of the vestibular apparatus or the vestibular nerve like Meniere's disease. And we'll be talking about those more in the coming videos in this playlist. But hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the vestibulo ocular motor reflex, the VOR. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.